Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Balboa Park and the Palisades and this official dedication and transfer of the artwork on the Auto Museum to the city of San Diego. My name is Roger Scholey. I'm president of the Committee of 100. Uh, welcome to our board members. Thank you. Board members, city staff, invited guests. This is, the, this is the biggest public event I've seen in San Diego in more than a year. And I think that's all appropriate because Babel Park is our number one crown jewel and it deserves all our attention and love and support. And thank you so much for coming socially distanced, masked, and ready to go. <clears throat> well, the uh, Auto Museum restoration has been six years in the making, or you might say 80 years, since it was, uh, all this decoration was de removed after the 1935 exposition. As you all probably know, the San Diego, like the rest of the United States, was deep in, a, in, a, in the Great Depression in 1935. And the powers to be said, we just can't sit here doing nothing. We got to do something, so let's put on a show. And that's what the California Pacific International Exposition was, 1935-36. It was to capture the spirit of 1915, when the Panama Canal was celebrated and in 1935, the second exposition was to look into the future for San Diego. Um, the, the private uh, backers of this exposition hired Richard Requa, famous architect in San Diego, to be the exposition architect. And he chose a different design for this part of the park, the Palisades, to complement the Spanish colonial from the first exposition. So this is pre-Columbian Maya and Aztec designs, as you see behind me. And for the person to do all the artwork design, he chose La Juan Laranaga, straight from Hollywood. Uh, and I like his story because it sort of reflects some of our thoughts about San Diego today. He was born in 1885 in San Antonio, Baja California, near La Paz. He graduated from St. Vincent's College, or Loyola Marymount University, in 1900 and worked at the Panama Pacific Exposition in San Francisco in 1915, the same year as our first exposition. Then the Shriners Auditorium in LA, set design and artist for movies. The most important was from what we think today is King Kong. So our artist was born and bred after that King Kong uh, performance by him. <coughs> so his job in 19, at the exposition was to do all of the artistic designs inside and out for so many of the buildings, both the old ones and the brand new ones, including this one behind me. And in addition to these four murals on the Auto Museum, he also did the March of Transportation, which you can see at the Art, Art uh, Air and Space Museum over here, and that was restored in 1990. Now, it took us more than a year to get this project to its uh, point today, and it only took nine months to build an entire exposition in San Diego for that 1935 uh, event. So when San Diegans want to do something, they can come to it, and that's what we tried to do here. Now, how in the world would you do an exposition, all these buildings and, and all this decoration uh, so quickly? Well, Juan Laranaga picked uh, several Hollywood tricks up his sleeve. Instead of plaster, he used layered pieces of wallboard to make all this decoration, the design. This is all just kind of temporary stuff you do as a kindergartner. Same thing with the murals. The, those were not tiles in 1935. They were pieces of wallboard that he cut to make look like tiles and painted them as such. <coughs> uh, this was the California State Building, which is why the murals pick, uh, depict certain uh, scenes from California. And from the left, they, re they represent commerce, scenic beauty, agriculture, and industry. And if you look closely at them, there, they show old planes and cars, smokestack industries, idyllic farms, and beaches. And I think the beach scene looks perhaps like La Jolla Shores. <clears throat> At the dedication on opening day of the exposition on May 29th, 1935, Governor Frank Miriam was here, and he said this, San Diego should be held up as an example to a troubled world, and inspiration can be found here for renewed hope, renewed optimism, and renewed confidence in the fundamental virtues of self-reliance and self-confidence. Well, there's nobody else in San Diego that has more self-reliance and self-confidence than our Mayor Don Gloria. 
a champion for Balboa Park as a councilman, assemblyman, and now mayor of San Diego. So Todd, come on, come on up. Thank you, Roger, and good morning, everyone. It is so exciting to be here, not just to accept this beautiful gift for our city, but to see you all in person, in 3D. And congratulations on remembering how to put on a coat and button up a shirt, put on some pants, right? Uh, we're slowly coming out of this uh, hibernation, if you will. And I'm so excited for that plane to go pie. Uh, I'm so excited for, to invite you all back to the park to see the number of things that we've been able to accomplish with this sort of lost year, if you would, right? We None of us wanted to lose this past year, but to take the opportunity when the, op the operations of the park were a bit less to do improvements like this one, the cottages, uh, the observation deck uh, over at the, the um, fig tree. We have so much that is uh, worthy for, to invite St. Diego's back to our city's crown jewel. I want to just start off by thanking Roger Scholey and the Committee of 100 for bringing this day uh, to all of us here in the city. Thank you, Roger, for your leadership. The Committee of 100's hard work has, of course, uh, brought many philanthropic contributions uh, to Balboa Park, uh, helping us to improve our park by preserving its history. It's so important. Uh, as someone who majored in history myself, uh, I understand exactly how what you do makes our park and our city a better place to live. I don't want to go too much further without uh, acknowledging Doug Barnhart uh, and the team here who helped make this possible uh, through their generosity and through their hard work. We can celebrate and enjoy this beautiful visual that for too long we have not been able to enjoy, but now we can once again. You know, back in 1935, Balboa Park was home to the California Pacific International Exposition, as Roger was sharing. And this was a time, if I may set the scene a bit, of great, uh, great trouble in our country. Great Depression ravaged both our national and local economies. Uh, that dismal economic situation, uh, the ex exposition was intended to be a beacon of hope, created to pr promote San Diego and its economy. And it proved to be a tremendous success. Just as times were difficult then, we find ourselves in the midst of great difficulty right now. And I'd point out that just behind us, our city's firefighters, lifeguards, EMTs, and others are providing life-saving vaccines and have been doing so for weeks and weeks and weeks. And when you see any of those folks, please do me a favor. Thank them for their sacrifices. Thank, you, thank them for showing up every day for work, protecting our residents of our city. Today, we find ourselves working hard to gain a footing and some semblance of the life that we knew before the pandemic. And COVID-19 has changed our world and interrupted our lives in so many ways, too many really to be counted. But the beauty of history is our ability to understand where we were, how we persevered, and how we'll get through it. We often do that through the visual, uh, through the medium of art. And at one time, the originals of the murals that graced the California State Building during the exposition uh, told a story, as Roger mentioned, of commerce, of scenic beauty, of industry, and of agriculture, or actually agriculture, then industry, right to left. A few days before the exposition's opening day, San Diego Union story headline called the, these murals a vivid story and an inspiring monument that will be educational for many years to come. And I think that proved to be prophetic. We are here today, these many, many years later, celebrating this vivid story of our city told in this beautiful art that is on these walls. While we have advanced significantly uh, since our lifestyles in 1935, two things I think still ring true about our great city. That San Diego is resilient, and that her crown jewel still shines. I would humbly suggest that in 2021, we are standing here living out the dreams of that expo from 1935 as we reimagine our great city. When it comes to commerce, we are leading the resurgence of our economy after the pandemic through a, blue, a back to work SD plan uh, that is the blueprint for our economic recovery. Our city's landmark climate action plan we, allows us to preserve the scenic beauty of San Diego, ensuring that for many years to come, our children, our children's children, and their children will still be able to enjoy so much of what we love about this great city. And we appreciate all the workers of this city and their modern fruits of their labors, which of course are helping to restart our economy. And of course, San Diego has never ceased being a city of industry. Our cross-border economy, uh, attracts innovative entrepreneurs who create jobs and strengthen our local economy. So to sum it up, while much has changed, 
much remains the same. San Diego continues to be beautiful. It continues to be resilient. And by reflecting on our past, we can imagine the vibrant future where San Diego ceases being content with simply being fine and instead chooses to dare to be truly great. Again, I want to thank the Committee of 100 for this beautiful mural, Doug Barnhart for his contributions, Andy Field and our incredible team at Park and Rec, and every city employee who had a hand in this matter. I look at this corner of the park, we were discussing a sleepy corner not that long ago, but between this beautiful reclamation of this public space, this beautiful restoration of the facade, what my friend Steve Stopper and company are doing over at Save Starlight, what will soon come with our Comic-Con Museum, and as your mayor, what we have to do on this gymnasium behind us. Soon enough, this will be the crown jewel of our crown jewel, and I appreciate all of you being a part of this celebration today. Thank you all for being here. It's great to see everybody. Back to you, Roger. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as a fellow history major, I too was interested in, in the history of Balboa Park, of course. And when it comes to historic preservation, it's always a matter of being uh, very expensive, time-consuming, and requiring passionate uh, dedication for preservationists to make things that have fallen apart come back to life. When it came, uh, the Committee of 100, founded in 1967, focused on the 1915 exposition buildings for uh, several decades, and in 2015, thanks to our former president, Mike Kelly, we turned our attention to the Palisades. As Todd was, said, was saying, we used to call this the stepchild of Balboa Park. A lovely parking lot, you know. <laughs> Asphalt, people said, I could park here, but what will I do here? And we're, our hope now is to make this a place to be a second, a second uh, gate, you might say, to Balboa Park as, as the years roll along. And we hope uh, everything that we're working on will come to pass by the 100th anniversary of the exposition 2035. It'll be more than a sheet cake this time. <clears throat> well, our first priority was the California State Building the Auto Museum today uh, because of its majestic monumental murals. It cost $90,000 to build this entire building in 1935. It's cost us $715,000 to restore just the exterior not to mention the Auto Museum itself and what uh, they've done inside as well. Just to bring you updated, up to date on the building, after it closed down as an exposition site, it became a Coast Artillery Armory in 1937, a cook's quarters during World War II, a conference built in 1949, and the Auto Museum moved into 1988. Now, to re recreate the murals, uh, we did not have very much detail available. All we had were some black and white photographs, nothing in color. So we hired RTK Studios, who have, we have a representative here today, waving her hand over there, in Ojai, California, to help us. They spent three years and some 3,000 hours researching and fabricating 576 uh, tiles, each one 12 by 12 inches and uh, created the murals as you see them here, eight by 18 feet. This was not an easy task to do. And uh, just as I, as I nod to the Barnhart team, not a single tile was broken. <clears throat> well, with a gift from the Redfern family, we were able to move beyond the murals to restore the Maya style uh, ornamentation at the parapet down, be down below. Bellagio Precast, and Mike Madsen is from that company, used his wizardry and skills to turn those fuzzy photographs into fiber, uh, glass fiber reinforced concrete and attached them with stainless brackets, stainless steel brackets to the building. We insisted on that, which is much more expensive than galvanized because we want this to last. So they assure us that at least 100 years from now, those brackets and the, and the uh, panels should be up for our generations of the future to enjoy. Meanwhile, the city crews got busy, as uh, the mayor said, uh, and we helped them all the way along. We helped underwrite the cost of painting the building, the historic color you see,
We hired experts to, an to analyze the, form the layers of paint that went down to 1935 and realized that the color is pretty much uh, what Sherman Williams described as bagel beige. Uh, the city, another thing, the city uh, r removed invasive ficus trees a year ago, which were undermining the, the building. And just a few days ago, they finished relandscaping the front of the building with the help of Friends of Balboa Park uh, landscaping uh, donations. So special thank yous go out to uh, two people in particular, Mike Kelly, our former president, who is here today. And Robert Thiel, our tireless uh, volunteer architect, citizen architect, <laughs> who's been at this building site, I think, almost every day since they started in January. So both of you are, we couldn't have done it without you. And of course, we have our, our board members and our many donors, especially, as I said, the Redfern family. Jack? Redfern was a county government surveyor and met his wife Irma, native of Mexico in Coronado. They settled there and to our great benefit, they, they bequested their real estate holdings uh, proceeds to, to the Committee 100 and other park organizations. And if she's here, Nancy Spector is the one who we thank for having that, making that possible. <clears throat> Well, the Committee 100 is not a building company, and we needed some experts to take this project on. And through an RFP process, we came upon Doug Barnhart at Bar Barnhart Reese Construction to be our construction manager and contractor. And special thanks go to Chuck MacArthur, who served as the construction manager, and Sheen Liberty as the job superintendent. And they were here every single day on the weekends through those rainy days we had and made the project come on time, on budget, and perfect. So. Doug, please give us a few words. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Mayor Gloria for being here today. Um, as he said, we live in stressful, unusual times, and we're very fortunate to have his calm and steady leadership uh, through this period of time. So hopefully we're seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, contractors, <clears throat> particularly me, get way, 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 way too much credit. The credit for this belongs to the Committee of 100. Because all of us know, and I think the mayor would vouch for me on this, the hard work is getting it all together and getting the funding and, getting, and, and making it all possible. Because without that, <clears throat> no, nothing happens. A contractor is always is only as good as the boots on the ground. And the boots on the ground here were nothing less than exceptional. So. Uh, Shane Liberty and uh, Chuck MacArthur, I mean, this is, this is good work. And they both worked for me a long, long time, and they know when I say it's good work, it is good work. Because uh, the eyes, these tiles are all radiused on the back. They're all custom. Uh, they are magnificent. And so the honor is all ours that we got the privilege and I say that uh, San Diego has been so, so good to the Barnhart family. We've got to build so many nice projects down here. Uh, and this is, this is the latest. I think Roger asked me in the interview pro process, he says, you've built so many large scale projects involved in Petco Park and the airport and the sales enclosure at the convention center and university projects and everything else. What makes you want to do this and I answered it and this is absolutely the truth the size of the project is not what makes it special what makes it special is what it does for the community including those people that you do not know you will never know that they come and enjoy it and I just hope that uh, San Diego and the Committee of 100 will stay with the vision We'll stay with the fountain. 
and uh, stay with what it's going to take to bring this plaza to life. And um, it will benefit San Diego, I think, not only commercially, but it will reach into the heart of everyone who lives down here and bring us back. And so, Roger, thank you for allowing us to be part of your team. Thank you. Now, the mayor has to run off to another emergency, I mean, another occasion. <laughs> but before you go, I have something for you from the Committee of 100 and Doug Barnard, so please come forward. Let's see, so there's one for you. Thank you, sir. And I'd like to open you, have you open them up while you're standing here. This is something extra. Shall we? All right, Roger, what you got? Oh, oh very nice. So these are uh, six by six inch ver uh, sample tiles that were used to make the 12 by 12 inch versions. There were only 30 of them were made, very valuable. Uh, they're, they're, they're numbered, his number is number one of 30, Doug's is number one of two of 30, and we're going to uh, make those available for sale later on. And on the back is a uh, little description of what it's about. My wife, tur Carol, turned them into trivets and put them beautifully boxed for, uh, for the two of them, and we'll do the same thing for any of, uh, any of you who might be interested. So we hope you use those as they're intended, which is on your tables for hot pots and whatever to put on them. <laughs> and thanks so much, uh, Todd, for coming today. We really appreciate your support. Well, be, uh, the next speaker is Andy Field, the, pr the Park and Rec Parks and Recreation Department Director. Uh, his his department has been in, uh, indispensable in making this project happen through any number of little hiccups all along the way. He uh, His czars of the park, first Jeff Van Durl and then Christina Chadwick, plus Mario Llanos, Charlie Daniels, and Marie Wiggins were always available Con contacted us, responded to our calls instantly when we needed some help. And so, Dandy, Andy, please come forward and give us a few thoughts about what else is going on in the park besides this thing. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Roger, and thank you, Committee of 100. What a fantastic treat to see this improvement behind us. Whereas we once had a bare wall, we now have historic murals that will be there for generations to come. What an exciting day this is. We would love to be able to say that today was a perfectly gorgeous and beautiful sunny day, but this is still okay because, as the mayor said, we get to see all of you in the flesh. And this is, I think, as Roger said, I think the first big event we've had here. I'm looking forward to many more this summer. So let's make it a great summer, San Diego, as we go forward and see a return, hopefully, with all going well with our reduced COVID-19 case rates that we'll be able to bring life back to the park. We've already seen it with the cultural partnership and our um, institutions and museums here in the park reopening. Uh, Mayor mentioned several improvements that are happening here in Balboa Park and at the Palisades specifically. And I did want to uh, reiterate the fact that we do look at Municipal Gym and hope to have improvements there very soon. And we've been conversing with Committee of 100 and others to find ways to make improvements there. We're also looking at having more improvements made to other buildings in the park, including the Casa del Prado and the Balboa Park Club. So we're looking at those as well. And we do have the renovation of the Botanical Building coming very soon. This is a very exciting time for Balboa Park. A very exciting time to see renovations happen. And the fact that we're standing here in this plaza really speaks to some of the changes that we've seen 
over the past year during the course of the pandemic. As we continue on ahead, I do want to acknowledge our um, staff, and I think I've already heard some of the names mentioned, but I did want to reiterate that we have a great crack team over here, uh, kind of standing behind the red umbrella, the Parks and Recreation Department staff. I know we have several of our maintenance workers who are also around the area too, as well as our recreation staff. So hats off to all of you because really, as Roger said, this would not happen without having great staff here in Baboa Park. And we are very much blessed to have that. So thank you. In addition to that, I wanted to close by uh, mentioning the support of Mayor Gloria, also our Council President Pro Term, Stephen Whitburn, and just wanted to remind everybody about the public-private partnerships. And while we've talked about the fine work of the Committee of 100 and the fine work of the Balboa Park Conservancy, the Friends of Balboa Park, the Balboa Park Cultural Partnership, and many other fine organizations in this park, I just want to remind everyone that it takes a village and the improvement of the park at the end of the day rests with each of us. So I really appreciate all of you taking the time to be here today and to celebrate this and to look forward for many great things to come soon. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Roger. And I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andy. Well, as Steve Jobs says, there is more. In the future, media future, in a few months, the Committee of 100 is going to re bring, bring back the two uh, grizzly bear statues and two flagpoles that were on the roof of the building in 1935. All we need is FAA approval to do that. The Friends of Balboa Park and the Committee of 100 will be putting up a historic marker in front of the building to give history, short history of the building. And we hope to get approval to b put a small bronze plaque somewhere on the building to thank our many donors. Uh, as Andy and the mayor said, our next big project is the municipal gym across the way. It's a lovely building today, but it needs a bit of TLC. I think you all agree. It was originally the Palace of Electricity and Varied Arts in 1935 and became a gym after World War II. Uh, and our plan, as you can see in some of the models over on this table, is to bring back an incredible uh, bronze-like panel over the, over the top and add uh, ornamentation similar to that on the on the auto museum. Uh, the next thing we hope will happen is the phase two of the Panama Pan American Plaza conversion to pedestrian only use. That's the north part of the parking lot, going from a parking lot to a, a people space with offsetting parking nearby. The cherry on the top will be the creation recreation of the Firestone Singing Fountain. It's going to be where you're all sitting today. It was the marvel of the 1935 exposition, something like the Bellagio Fountain you might see in Las Vegas or, or fountains in Dubai or all around the world. Incredible effects they make, while we also want to keep the historic look of the, of the fountain more or less as it was. Uh, it was called the Firestone Singing Fountain because the Firestone Tire Company gave the money to build it. So we're, all, we're just looking for a sugar daddy out there who has two or three million dollars to recreate it today. If you know anybody, let me know. And starting in a few weeks, uh, we are going to uh, partner with the AIGA Graphic Arts Organization in San Diego to create an incredible, collectible, uh, one-of-a-kind poster to celebrate our uh, accomplishment at this building. We're going to reach out to professionals, amateurs, students, it's going to be reach out to Tijuana all over San Diego County to find the best, brightest, and most original artwork we can find, and then produce that poster, hand it out, sell it at gift shops, and make a limited edition signed a series of uh, a numbered series of posters of that one winning poster as a tribute to the Auto Museum project. And if this goes well, we hope to do the same thing on all the other projects that all the other organizations are doing in the park, one by one, with the Botanical Building, of course, the Gymnasium, any number of other ones you can think of. <coughs> uh, the final speaker today is Lenny Lazinski, the Executive Director of the Auto Museum, who's been a great host to us, helping us uh, weather the, the uh, issues of, of rebuilding this uh, building. The one upside of having a pandemic like shut down during the last year was that we could access the building, make all these improvements, the city as well, without a great deal of interruption of the public. Now that the building is open, uh, the public can come back and see how this part of the park is 
trans been transformed miraculously over the last year. So Lenny is, there you are. All right, thank you. They say I'm last, so I guess I'm your ticket out of here. <laughs> they left the person who likes the sound of his own voice. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you for coming out to celebrate the return of the murals to the California State Building. On behalf of the San Diego Automotive Museum's Board of Directors and the staff of the museum, we would like to thank the Committee of 100 and their donors for making a vision a reality. It is an honor to have a building we call home the recipient of much needed facelift. With the enhancements of the exterior, the museum staff, volunteers, members, all have a little more pep in the step. There is a renewed energy, enthusiasm as we emerge from this pandemic. When I took over as CEO in January of last year, I was informed of this project. And over the last year, I've had the privilege of working with Roger Scholey of the Committee of 100, Robert Thiel, the architect and mastermind of the project, and Shane Liberty of Barnhart Reese Construction, who essentially moved into the museum and has been a great addition to the team. I have been honored to get to know and watch as they fulfill a promise of investing in the Palisades and the surrounding museums. While COVID has indeed wrecked havoc on the entire park and have allowed, and, sorry, and have not allowed the, excuse me, we have not allowed the pandemic to beat us down. We have taken advantage of the opportunity to enhance both the outside and the inside of the San Diego Automotive Museum. I would like to thank Ray Brock for our lift to the second floor, Discount Tires for the new floor in the museum, and both Wheelhouse Bank and King Amapur for their financial contributions to ensure the San Diego Automotive Museum's survival of the COVID pandemic. So long awaited here for your ending. I'd like to personally invite all of you inside for light refreshments and enjoy the museum on a historical day. Thank you for coming out and supporting all of the organizations involved. So thanks again for everybody coming out. I hope you enjoyed meet, seeing each other for the first time in a year. I forgot how many tall people were, how short, uh, whatever. I think we all came through this as best we could. It's a new day at Balboa Park, and thank you so much for coming.